Boom, 5150. Southern California. We say it's cold. You know that it's really cold. How cold is it in the back east? Well, right now in Rochester, New York, where I live, it's negative one. We're so pussies. This ain't shit. This is summertime for you, right? Yeah, this is, uh, I'm in shorts. It's <laughs> January. I'm drinking a beer outside. If I did that back home, I'd be a statistic. <laughs> Yet I'm cold. All right, here's the deal. Dan Loker. So many fucking bands. I'm not even going to try to mention all of them. I'll just mention the one that I find very instrumental. Uh, Brutal Truth, Venomous Concepts, Nuclear Assault, and two others that God knows you probably get asked about all the time. All I want to know is, do you get any Metallica money off that? Metallica money? Yeah. Why would I get Metallica money? Because the SOD thing was huge. What about royalties, the merch? Oh, no, that kind of dried up mostly. Did it? Yeah, I used to make some cash off that before the end of the century, and I invested a little bit, bought a bunch of weed, <laughs> um, shit like that. But I lived at home then, so I didn't have to pay rent. It was more a carefree existence. Here's the deal. Nuclear Assault, 1985, I believe, I received the demo in the mail. You know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you what's the pleasure of talking to old school, underground, extreme metal guys that know what I'm talking about. No internet, relationship with the postman, writing letters, cassettes, and human communication. Back in 1984, 85, I received a demo from a band called Nuclear Assault. Little did I know that at that time, you had been in the 1984 Anthrax record, which is the only record I like, Fistful of Metal. You're just saying that. Here. No, I'm being dead serious. I I, ask, ask anybody here, but don't, don't get me started on the Bastion. And then in 1986, I was watching Donahue, okay. and there was an interesting segment on there where they were talking to the youth of the New York hardcore scene, and they're going around saying how we were fucked up at Walt. Well, how the whole genre, but especially the New York genre, how we're, we're all fucked up, and we were going to be, uh, what were we doing, and this and that. The point being is, is you've been the figment of underground extreme metal for a long time. We're here to talk about nuclear assault. The okay. farewell. Is it really the farewell? I know you've been going all over the world playing the farewell tour, and now you're on the West Coast. This is the fit. That's it. Done. It's a finito. The concept is we're not going to come back to summer with that we have played recently. But we haven't played L.A. for fucking years. Forever. But yeah, this would be the last one here. If something came up like fucking Singapore or Bulgaria and we haven't played there, we'll do it. But we're not going to come back to somewhere we've done in the recent past. Okay. Do you enjoy going back and revisiting these segments, these areas of the world, playing nuclear salt tracks from the whole discography, especially the old stuff? Yeah, sure, because there's people who are totally into that shit, and the funny thing is you can see some of these kids, they're 17, 18 years old, I mean, they weren't even, they're like new millennium, but they're totally into it, and they did their research, and I'm not one of those old bitter dudes like, these fuckers weren't even alive when I made this record, I'm just glad that the thrash metal in general is still relevant, and it's, you know, it's an honor. Let's get into this. Come here, Dan. Get closer here. I want to make sure the camera gets you. Let's get into this. Back in that time, we knew that this genre of music that was evolving from the discharge, crass, you know, days, conflict, and then the metal, you know, the Judas Priest, the Iron Maiden, and then as it started mounting into like 84, 85, these genres, these scenes, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, with an amazing hardcore scene, did you ever ever phantom that 35 40 years later you'd be playing that exact music and that it's full circle there's a whole genre of young kids that are in 1985 attire and the spirit to a certain extent i had no idea that in this time of my life being in my early 50s already that i would still be able to get away with doing this and that I mean, we could tell that the music we were writing then was we were forging like a new genre and it has longevity and that's, you know, you know, something that means a lot to me. But yeah, it's fucking awesome that still doing this and that there's, yeah, like you said, kids who wouldn't even have been born then that are still totally into it. And no, I had no idea, but I'm psyched 
I'm happy. I mean, I've played more modern shit since then, like grindcore and black metal, but, you know. Very well documented. But thrash, you know, uh, that's the shit that I uh, kind of started on as far as going around, going to Europe, doing records and all that. So it's awesome that it still can do this. And got a sold out show tonight with a bunch of killer bands. And yeah, it's fucking awesome. One of the things that's interesting, again, talk, talking about the past, how it goes hand in hand with the future, with the, with the present, is the fact nuclear assault, the topics of that era. Here we are, 2018, and it's the same fucking scenario. We're back at it again. Potential nuclear war, uh, Reaganistic hating towards Trump. There's a whole genre of kids that are growing up that are angry, they're frustrated. But yet they're not as vicious as I remember we were. Is, you think the internet and, you know, the cush life that they're having where, you know, you could go on the internet and grab everything? They're not mailing fucking letters of Tom Warrior trying to get a t-shirt anymore. Getting burned, by the way. He never mailed me mine. That fucker. <laughs> yeah, the internet has made people more passive and they could just click a button that says like instead of going out and doing something about it. And I was never, you know, politically active. I mean... The bands I was in made statements, but I wasn't sitting there, you know, fucking protesting, holding up signs or anything. But, you know, it's true now that, yeah, people are just kind of lamer because they could just click a button and express their emotions like that from the safety of their bedroom. And, you know, you would say, oh, you can't get arrested doing that. But then if you want to be all conspiracy theory, maybe you can one of the things that I like is if you look into the nuclear assault lyrics, as we mentioned before, it's like if they're meant for to this day, day and time. When you're playing your music to majority of a young audience, I'm sure there's some old fuckers like us out there as well. How do you feel feeding that mass with that energy and the music that you wrote again almost 35, 40 years ago? I think it's killer. I think it's kind of like passing it down to another generation right? and just being there almost like some kind of teacher like this is how we did it you need to absorb this and you better pass your test one of the things that I wanted to mention to you is I've always admired the fact that uh, throughout the years the underground spirit no matter how watered down or how marketed or how this so-called heavy extreme genre has gotten, which in reality has just been a marketing. How you've always been part of affiliate or affiliated with bands that are extremely underground. No marketing, no money capability. Just you going out playing what you've wanted to do. Be that as it may. When you're playing Nuclear Assault tunes now, do you still feel that angst, that energy, that excitement, that happiness from back in the day? Yeah, sure, because it's almost like a trigger when you play that stuff and there's a bunch of people in the crowd going nuts. That makes it timeless. It doesn't matter if it's now or 1987, it's the same feeling. Yeah, you know, it's just a little micro environment you're in, a little magical place for an hour. And uh, yeah, and just Don't looking worry, at. I got, an, I, got an, I got my own that guy here. That's all right. If you would have ran me over in slow motion, it wouldn't have hurt too much. <laughs> Yeah, man, I just, uh, when I go on stage, well, I'm usually pretty stoned too, but um, I just go into a little dreamland because it's all muscle memory with the riffs. I know what I'm playing, so I just kind of enjoy the show and look at people and, you know. One of the things that I've always admired about the whole concept of this music is the fact that it really started and originated from feelings, from emotions. I'm not a psychiatrist, but here we are now at a older age my question to you is how the fuck can you play this music i get a headache just watching you headbang well my back hurts watching you play i have more aches and pains than i used to that is true and i don't tour all the time like i used to yeah, did you retire a couple years ago i called it re no see it was like a semi-retirement which was actually a polite way to stop doing brutal truth at the time okay. but i was also getting sick of traveling getting here from new york it doesn't matter that it was one degree out when we left home. It was more about the first flight was late because they had too much fuel on the plane, like dumb shit, and then you get stressed out. We barely made our flight here from D.C. I, my wife wasn't on the flight yet, and she had to wait for some fucking gay check. I'm not going to bore you guys with the gory details. No, no, I know, I know but to the extent what you're talking it's about. It's the kind of shit where... Adult shit. 
Yeah, I just get too stressed out these days. It's the airline industry has become very stressful.